Hello, we're live. I'm live. On this taste challenge, we have from 1933, Grosskuth's Distilling Companies. There he is with that compressed air. Uh, aristocrat Light Rum. This is bottled. It's from the West Indies somewhere. <clears throat> then imported, so it could be Puerto, Puerto Rico or the United States Virgin Islands. It probably is because it would say imported, I think. Bottled by Grosskuth Distillers, Bardstown, Kentucky, 80 proof. No age statement. It, these things are sometimes age, not in a matter of years, but months. That's why Bacardi and uh, what's some of the other companies? Don Q and et cetera are part of the rums of Puerto Rico where they're part of the association that they have. Their standards is it has to be aged at least one year. You can look up the rums of Puerto Rico. Very interesting website with good videos and information about those distilleries. The competitor competitor today is Clubhouse Premium Quality Rum. Gold, aquamarine, and white. Bottled by Kentucky Standard Distillers, Bardstown, Kentucky, 80 proof. Same zip code, 40004. You say, golly, those companies must be close to each other, Grosskuth and Kentucky Standard. Oh, they're real close because they had the same company, Heaven Hill. <laughs> Tommy Carroll, good morning, Jay. Good morning to you. So I did the taste challenge this morning with the Canadian whiskeys. Caliber, premium versus Lord Calvert, Canadian. The Caliber one. Tasted a little bit better and plus it was cheaper. So when you got those two factors, taste better and is cheaper, there's your winner. Now these are the same price. Naturally. Hold on a second. Hello? Yes, I did. Can I, um, I'm doing something right now. Um, actually, can I call you back? Okay. I will. Oh, boy. Somebody calling me about the Memphis trip, <clears throat> which I did go. All right. So um, they're both one liter bottles, 1,000 milliliters, and they were both $6.99 plus tax. So $6.99, 1,000 milliliters. So the price is no object, the size is no object, so this is a pure taste challenge. And they're both from the same company, Heaven Hill, uh, and they're both clear rums. They don't say clear rum. You know, these companies always say silver rum, white rum, whatever. Clear doesn't sound good, doesn't market, doesn't market well. Just like they don't say thin beer. It's not called Miller Thin Beer. It's Miller Light Beer. At one time, they were selling that stuff as diet beer. That didn't go over too well at all, diet beer. No, it did not. Appearance won't matter. They're both clear liquid. Clear, 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 clear liquid. Uh, I don't think the aroma or the flavor is going to be much different. If at all, we are talking about a true challenge. Uh, my recollection was favorable towards both. I wasn't like uh, going wild on the quality, like, oh, it's so great. Oh, this is like the greatest silver rum ever. No. They were just like, they're nice. But honestly, Captain Morgan, there is only one Captain Morgan. And uh, Bacardi Superior, which are much more expensive. I was not seeing that they were much more of a value, if at all a value. And I think these would be good substitutes. And in fact, they would be the substitute I would pick. G&JK says, good morning. I'm having a 25 ounce Natty Ice today. Well, that's a good idea. 
Let's mix them up, do the challenge, and I'll call uh, this lady back. Let's see if I can get her on the phone. I was walking in Memphis. I was literally walking in Memphis. Okay, good afternoon, Ron, says Maxwell. Hello, Maxwell. It's morning time here, but afternoon where you are in the Russian Confederation. Okay, so Aroma. Yeah, same old thing. Talk about run of the mill, like, like a hamster in a cage. But it's interesting, but it's like wood. Wood, light charcoal. Very light, very light. Maybe it's the Grosskutz. Aristocrat light rum. Very light and and I got those potatoes simmering on that in that extra virgin olive oil. So <laughs> that could that's wafting into the room with the, the bell peppers and the white onions. But um yeah, it's very light. Same here, and neither one of these is in the least way offensive. I don't know how or why. I don't know how somebody could taste these and say, oh, it's so repellent. Oh, terrible. Oh no, terrible. Come on, you want terrible? Come over here and try some of this Ron Rio. Smells like Roundup and rancid sugarcane stalks. Now that will be memorable. Won't be a good memory, but it'll be memorable. Yeah, these are just basic and they're fine. Am I a rum guy? Do I run after rum to drink? No, I do not. I never did before and I don't now and I probably won't in the future, but I like the taste challenge. It's kind of interesting. It's a low price game, but you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not putting out a lot of money. We talking about $13.98 for two bottles, a liter bottles. Talking about two liters for $13.98, 80 proof, basic rum. So hey, yeah, it, 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 no complaints. Oh, my hint. Uh, uh. Taste time. So it's a tie on appearance, tie on price, tie on bottle size, tie on aroma. Even Steven down the line. Flavor. Yeah. I'm so used to these now. It's like a peppery note. Like think along the lines of black pepper. Wood, like toothpick wood, but a little charcoal. So there's a little char, but it's not charred barrels. No, they filter it through charcoal. And most of these companies have a secret blend of different woods they're charcoaling, you know, turning into charcoal. So they're never going to tell you. You're never going to know. So forget it. Uh, Bacardi is like, we use, I don't know, six different ones. Uh, it's private. It's a secret. And Myers is rum. Same thing. Oh, this extravagant array of woods made into charcoal is filtered so many times and et cetera. And they're not going to tell you. Why would they tell you? You. These are trade secrets. Look at Anna Bush, Sue and Miller right now saying, you stole our recipe. <laughs> and that's what Anna Bush is saying. All y'all ever do is steal our recipes. You got spies in our company. We make a beer and then all of a sudden you have a beer. <laughs> that's what John Lennon said the Rolling Stones did. Every time the Beatles come out with something new, then you ever notice six months later, they're coming out with something. Copying us. And and I think it was Keith Richards or Mick Jagger was one of them said, uh, well, yeah, but uh, they, they do interesting things. And when we copied it, it does really well, is basically what we're, he was saying. Just follow their lead and, and make a lot of money. Then don't break up and let them break up. And then you just continue on for another 49 years off and on. All right. Same thing here, but not as much peppery spice. <clears throat> well, maybe there is <laughs> on second sip. I always watch these beer reviews and people say, I'm going to take a drink. I never heard people say that before I started watching YouTube. Like, I really never recall in my whole life anybody saying, I'm going to take a drink. They always say, I'm going to take a sip of a drink. You know what I'm saying? Let me take a sip of this drink. You know, I'll have a drink. Or I'm gonna serve a drink, or I'll order a drink. I've heard people say that, or I'll mix a drink. But I don't remember anybody ever saying I'm gonna take a drink. Now there was that song by ACDC, "Have a Drink on Me." Have a drink. We're talking about the entire drink. So, but I always heard people saying I'm gonna take a sip, or somebody might say, "Try a sip of this." See. 
So when I started watching YouTube, I hear all these people saying, I'm going to take another drink. And that always got me like, I would say, what are they saying? You know, I never heard anybody speak that way. Paul Abair said, Paul Abair, Abair. <laughs> hey, hey, Paul Abair says, I'm just listening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paul Abair, folks, you don't talk much. You don't eat much. Paul's like that guy in that story. Hey, Barry, yeah, I, you typed it before I could correct myself, but you're just all on my case. Paul's like that guy in that, that story, uh, content to be a jerk. But, I mean, it sounds better in Italian. The story sounds better in Italian. All right. Mm. One guy's going one way, the other one's going the other way. Yeah, without the beard and the mustache, you... You know, that's him. That's him. Oh, fuck. That's him. All right. But, um, I don't know. You got the paw stuck on the grill and the, the hoof, you know, it'd be a sin. You can't, I gotta cut it. You gotta cut it off. Anyway, um, I'm going to finish this. We got to get it finished. We got to get it out. I don't care how long it's been. We got to get it out. All right. Anyway. Just don't go keep, don't keep painting those religious pictures. Um, now, Gross Curse been on the market since 1933. I mean, Pikes, Pikes Peak was a pimple back when, uh, Aristocrat came out. Ha, 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 ha. Sorry, everyone. Uh, they never detected any sort of references. All right. Well. Uh, well, I don't know what to say about these except for they're a great value. You figure $6.99 for a liter and it doesn't taste bad. And I don't know. But I've been told that in the heat of the day, a man died of cold. No, but I don't know. But I think if you got down to it and you did a blind taste test, and that's the important thing. And a lot of these whiskey and rum guys, they're like the real experts. You know, they got a channel with graphics and they're really into it. And they 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 want you to like, comment, and subscribe and get on Patreon with them and everything. But they, you know, they would say, oh, this is junk, you know. But I would challenge them and say, well, would you do a blind taste test with Captain Morgan White and uh, Aristocrat? They might say, oh, I don't have time for your, I'm not going to entertain your foolishness. You don't have time for your games. But I would say it's important to do a blind taste test. I get the feeling there are a lot of like the beer snobs and wine snobs. I know, and you say out there in East Texas, you say you've run into a lot of wine snobs, which in, we've talked in the past and you said, that it was like a real negative vibe with those people, uh, like your experience that they they kind of like will get together and have a discussion. There's a lot of one-upmanship, like, oh, you had the Purview uh, 1973 uh, double oak from uh, Lichtenstein. Oh, that was okay. I had that when it was $1,700 bottle. It was good in some respects, not too good. And then the, he'll say, but I had the, uh, you know, I had the purview. Remember the purview that was uh, hand mixed by the, the, the uh, ex king of Greece. Remember the, uh, the exposition edition. You remember that it was uh, finished on, uh, on um, grape leaves from the island of Crete. You, you probably recall that that was the 1973 later year uh, offering was aged in, um, Mongolian oak uh, during the, the re revolt in Sikkim. That's why it was delayed, if you, if you recall. And um, that was $2,900 bottles. Very expensive. Cost me a lot. I was hesitant to buy it. And that was d delightful. Just couldn't get over that. And we we served that when we were hosting uh, the Bush family um, with the Enron event, uh, 1999. So you get a lot of that, he said. He said, I wouldn't say negative. I just think a lot of these people wouldn't be able to tell anything in a real blind taste test. Right. That's what I'm getting at. 
And I think they make stuff up like I'm tasting anise, chocolate, and hints of rhubarb, right? I'm tasting rhubarb, golf ball rubber, and um, calisthenics. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. You know, say you you're like me. You sit there and shake your head, thinking, hmm, I don't know about this. Well, this was fine. Sweet. You know, you get the sugar. Now you start picking up that that light molasses. Um. It reminds me so much of 1970 something, 1980, 81 of like being in Louisiana and somebody cutting sugar cane and you like chew on a, a, a real piece of the cane fresh and you get that. It'll almost like burn your teeth, you know, it's just rotting your teeth out while you're biting down on it. But it has that that heavy, 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 heavy sugar rush, you know, <laughs> but it's distilled. And this one has that too. So, Paul, you've talked about this in the past. You said you've oftentimes wondered if these companies are taking the same stuff and they're simply bottling it and then putting different labels on it, coming down the assembly line saying, okay, enough for the country club. I mean, the clubhouse, go on. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to do 1,800 bo 1800 bottles, then we cut it, and that's going to be the aristocrat. It does make you suspicious because, um, by golly, they're remarkably similar. If you want to say identical, I would not necessarily argue with that point. Beer, I would be less inclined to believe it because of Anheuser-Busch putting all their ingredients on the website and giving your calorie count and all of that, and, and it lines up like, it's all there. It's not the same. It's not the same. You know, it's deviate. It's not great differences. We talking about this one might be 127 calories. This is 122, but it is different. Now, Miller, you have some products that are across the board the same. For example, Mickey's fine malt liquor is the same specs as Magnum premium malt liquor. Same specs across the board. No deviation. Same ingredients. But if you write an email to the company, they'll swear it's the different products. And somebody brought up a very pertinent point, and I believe it was Jeff Brister, the Brister. He said, yeah, but consider this. They might be using different hop extracts. Wouldn't change the specs at all because it's just a flavoring component, right? Uh, but it would very slightly alter the, the taste different hop extracts. And I said, oh, it's brilliant. I never thought of that. So I think that's what they're doing. It's to, in a practical sense, the same. But when you start like doing the blind taste test and thinking on it, then you can say, okay, Mickey's fine malt liquor does have more of that kind of like little olive oil thing. And then the Magnum doesn't really, you know. So, um, that's why you have that little slight, 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 slight variation. And I think Jeff Brist is right. It's the hop, the hop extract. Be the same amount, you know what I'm saying? Whatever they inject, you know, they cut kind of things. I think they have things that squirt it into the, you know, the boiler. <laughs> yeah. But um, but it would be a different hop lineup. But it would be so very different. And it's all noble hops, you know. They're going to use that for these. Hellestoppelbach, American adjunct lagers, malt liquors, Hellestoppelbach. But it would be a relative difference. Okay, if something doesn't. Okay, and then I'm going to close this out. I got to go return the phone call and I got to deal with this potatoes, these potatoes. If something doesn't have chocolate or uh, coffee in it, why are you tasting it? Coffee beans are roasted. Maybe you're tasting the roasted flavor in the malt or whatever, not coffee. Eric Hawk says, hey, Ronnie. Hey, Eric. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if they're at a dinner party and they're trying to impress people, they might feel intimidated in a way. And so they're just like be thinking of stuff to say. You would hate to think that they're doing that. Maybe they maybe they have a much better uh, wine tasting facility than we do or wine tasting faculty than we do. 
But then on the other hand, probably they don't really, and they're just making stuff up. <laughs> but you might, you know, we want to give them the benefit of the doubt. They might have been drinking wine a lot longer than us. And maybe they are tasting calisthenics in it. But I don't know. You talked about that. You see, uh, you say all the 48 year old women have the puffy lips and the face stretched out, and they're all like, oh, I got some work done. Look how beautiful I am. And then you and I are saying, yeah, but you're still 48. And this is not your heyday, you know, it's not your heyday. Those days are gone. There's other women that's 22 and they're in the heyday and you're not going to, you can get the lips puffy and the face stretched and the heels and go around, you know, like a Fran Drescher, but yet still in all, it ain't going to really work might work in your mind. You probably know it's probably a, a case of denial. You probably know it's not really working. <laughs> and it's surely not impressing me by any stretch of the imagination. But anyway, that be that as it may. <laughs> I mean, just go buy fruit. You could take an old apple that's turned. You can dress it up, gussy it up, and put it on a beautiful platter. It's still an old apple that's turned. So I don't know what else to say about that. Now, you might say, look at you. Look at you. You're 51. You're wearing a cap. I have hair. I'm just wearing a cap because I just was wearing it. You know, but I mean, you're middle age. What are you trying to say? Yeah, but I, I, I admit it. My hair is gray. Well, it's turning gray. You know, that's nature. But uh, I'm not out here trying to um, defy reality or age. I know where I am. It's like that book, I'm okay, you're okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. Tommy says, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. I don't hate you because you're beautiful. You can't compete with youth, says 47 straight. And Paul says, there's only so much you can do after you can alter with surgery. That's right. And time marches on and I don't care what you're doing. Ronnie, what is better? Steel Reserve or Natty Daddy? Well, that's a big question. And I would assume you're talking about the 8.1% percent steel reserve that they get in Texas, where Paul's calling from, watching from, in Mississippi, and not the 6% steel reserve. Uh, steel reserve, Natty Daddy, both same ABV. Um, I would have to go with Natty Daddy. Steel reserve's got a harshness that just turns me off to no end. Now, if you get the black label, the triple export that they sell in Mississippi, that's a jewel. That's a jewel. But like David said, and I agree with him 100%, he said, all of those HGs, they're too, he they're too heavy. I said, yeah, it's like eating a beer. They're good. They're, they're rich. They're good. You know, but like, just think if you ate rich banquet food all the time, you would die. You know, you couldn't live. You'd be so ill. So it's the same thing with those beers. They're good once or twice a year. Once or twice a year. Fine. But I tell you what, the Steel Reserve 6%, that's an everyday drinker. It's got a light enough body. It's smooth. It's crisp. It's easy going. I can get it for $4.29 a six pack of pint cans, I might add. That's your real winner. So I, I, I would vote for natural father. I will vote for natural father, but I would not drink natural father. It's just too dang thick and heavy and chewable. I don't want to eat a beer. I want to drink a beer. These rums are nice. It's a dead, dead on tie. Let's be honest. We like to be honest on this channel. It's a tie. Either way, the either way the cut goes, you're getting a decent product. These are not really what you would give someone for a gift unless you were really cheap and have no shame. They're what people have at a party for watching the football game, going to a Mardi Gras parade, having a barbecue or, or, or christening party. You know what I'm saying? If you go to a bar room, they're not going to be on the shelf where you can see it. I'm sorry. They're not. They're going to be down below. And when you say, I want a uh, rum and Coke, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> and you're not really going to get the uh, Bacardi unless you specify it. And then you ain't getting it for $8. You're going to pay the call price. So this is the reality in which we live. But then why would you want to pay $8 for a mixed drink at a restaurant when you could buy an entire bottle for $7 plus? You know, six ninety nine plus tax. Like when I go to a restaurant, I just drink water. But I know people that are such, let's use the term alcoholics, because it's a, it's 
applicable. You go to a restaurant, you have to have alcohol that bad. You're going to pay that $8 for a mixed drink made with Coca-Cola and clubhouse rum. Right. That's a great value. Uh, you go to a football game and you got to have your beer. So you pay $8 for a 16 ounce plastic cup of beer. You say, oh, but it's craft beer. Great. $8. But you could have just had water, but you can't because, you know, the hands are starting to shake and all that. Guess what? I went to the game in Memphis. Yeah, it was depressing. Tulane got beat. They deserved it. They played horrible. And they played a better team. Let's be frank. But um, did I buy any beer? No, I did not. I drank water out the water fountain. I'm still here. Tasted good. Good old Tennessee water coming from some aquifer, aquifer you know. Um, I'm not doing it. I'm not going there. This cat ain't paying $8 for a beer. I don't care what it is. So I can drink it out of a plastic cup? I don't think so. But then other people are different, you know. I saw them out there with their with their white claw. All the girls were drinking the white claw. I say girls. That means any woman under 45. Oh, I said, look at them drinking white claw out the can, of course. And I could pour it in a cup. And, uh, and uh, yeah, they got their husband or boyfriend to pay that $8. I said, what a great deal. Then you're trapped. You got to pay it then. What are you going to do? Tell her, well, let's just, <laughs> you know, you're not going to tell her that. Let's just train. Then later we'll go to the store and get a whole case of White Claw. You can't. Then you're trapped. So you got it. All right. So, and they're just drinking it and then drinking another one and then drinking another one. I said, oh, look at that. And um, I saw one woman drinking a pint of Budweiser out the can. I was impressed by that. I said, hey, there's hope. There's hope for this world. A woman in 2019 drinking Budweiser straight out the can at a football game in Memphis. I said, now I feel better about this world. World Series tonight. Yeah, I think the Nationals are in for a, uh, an awakening, right? <laughs> all right. The Astros are going to show them what the American League is all about, and the Nationals are going to find out why the National League are. Blah, 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 blah. All right, thanks for watching this video production. I'm going to deal with the potatoes.